So a week ago, I uploaded a video where Dennis was in sparring training for John Brzezink and there's a guy who came late to practice and he was trying his hardest to get a pin on a stretched out and tired Dennis uh, hitting down on his bicep while he was separated. And I saw a podcast in which Dennis talks about that experience incident, you could call it, and basically talks about training, training philosophy and what you should be doing in training instead of trying to get an ego stroke. What is actually going to get you stronger in the long run? So... Let's go to the video right here. But actually, just uh, in case you didn't see it, I'm gonna play the clip right here. Just going fucking crazy. As you can see, Dennis's palm, palm up here. The dude has a good, good position. But Dennis is still holding very well. He's going into the press. So by this point, Dennis is completely tired and he's just holding, he's working on his static strength. There, and the other dude was just completely trying to get an ego boost there, uh, getting the win. That wasn't the only time you did that, if you watched the whole video, but that was just one clip of it. Let's see what some of the people said in the comments here uh, in response to that. Uh, let's see. Can't believe how effing disrespectful that was. I have to do this, especially when you face an armistice legend, decide to visit the gym late. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we have seen people doing this to Devin all the time. True, I mean, it's hard. It's hard for people to resist. I mean, I'm only human too. Like, armistice is a bit of a test of an ego when you're trying to win and you're trying to win so bad. But in training, it's, it's always better in the long term. If you're a beginner, I highly recommend just working on keeping good technique and good habits and training because you'll get better in the long run as opposed to separating and just worrying about a pin so much in training, especially if you're coming late. You're absolutely right, Tom. I hate that too. He goes on a live talk uh, to talk about this total bullshit in my mind. Uh, he managed to pin Dennis at 55% of his strength. Right, right. Guys that purposely come late to practice are straight up clowns. So anyways, you get you get some of the thoughts here, but here is the video where Dennis kind of talks about that. And the practice pool. This has obviously gone a bit viral recently. It was a practice pool with Mohammed Hill where he managed to pin you. Um, what happened um, from your side in terms of was this, you know, you, you allowed him to do it. Uh, this is a bit of controversy of, of how he did it and how he approached it, you know, as arm wrestlers. We want to be working together and training. What happened? Tell us what happened with Mohammed Hill. Ну, опять же, я если на спарринге прихожу, то есть моя задача, я не в сетке борюсь, я борюсь в армфайте, где выносливость играет важную роль. Моя задача, ну, перестоять соперника, кто там быстрее устанет и руку отдаст, да, и so as he's saying like it's a sparring it's not an arm fight so like me i like to go into every practice with something that i know i need to work on today for example i had arm wrestling practice and on my left i was working on uh using my top two fingers more in my top roll instead of i've gotten a bad habit of just containing with my bottom fingers because i'm usually stronger but i'm pulling this guy oleg and it's challenging me to have to use more of my top fingers and try and top roll in a different way. So I, I've been working on that objectively as well as keeping my shoulder in tight. So mentally I know to work on that. And on my right, I'm working on my top roll, my pronation, trying to keep my wrist flat and apply pronating side pressure because my hook is already my strong point on my right. So I'm trying to work on my weak points, which that's one thing about sparring it's, or training as you want to call it. Great, great time to work on your weak points. And then in the match, obviously you're gonna go in your strongest situation and try and beat the person, your strongest move. But in training, I always like to work on my weak points, which he'll talk about here in a second as well. Okay, так получилось, то, что он приехал через час, там полтора после того, как мы уже там наборолись. То есть определить, в какой он там форме, какая у него сила, я даже не, бер, не берусь ответственность заявлять, потому что Right, right, right. I mean, obviously the dude wouldn't beat him in an actual match. Like the first two to three matches when Dennis is more fresh is when you can kind of get a sense of how strong Dennis actually felt. But obviously he wasn't pinning a fresh Dennis by any means. Там первые два-три поединка могут о чем-то говорить в начале тренировки. А потом это уже все. Тем более я уже первая у меня фаза это бороться по-быстрому. Где-то так, чтобы пока не подгрузился. 
чисто отработать технические моменты. А вторая уже заключается в выносливости. То есть моя задача перестоять. То есть я даже не пытаюсь атаковать. Yeah, I, I like to do that too. I like to just literally work for endurance. If I know I'm stronger than someone, I'm not. I'm literally not pinning at all. Like today, I went to practice. All the people who I can control easily, I'm not only am I not just pinning them immediately because I'm getting nothing out of that, but I'm giving up position and trying to take it back and trying to work on my weak points. В конце тренировки перестоял меня, вот и все, скажем так. Тем более у него он даже не стоял, а атаковал да, жестко, поэтому там очень сложно вообще держать. Я люблю вот чисто крутиться и стоять. Это вот даже полезнее стоять, чем вот дергаться для показателя, ну, для тренировки выносливости. Obviously, as a top athlete, you're going to have people like this that come and they approach you and they come to try and pin you. What's your thoughts behind that? Obviously, you know, you're a top athlete. You want to be in the zone of actually training. What's your thoughts behind people actually coming in to challenge you, you know, even when you're just in practice? It's a great question right there. What are your thoughts on the ego, the ego training partners? Do you, do you have a message for any, you know, young arm wrestlers? And, and this is the part where he starts to give some really good advice on training. So if you're a beginner, this is the part where you really pay attention to what Dennis said because it's some, some absolute gems, which I totally agree with. Experience arm wrestlers, like, you know, you should be training rather than, you know, trying to actually damage the other opponent. <sighs> Тренировочный процесс должен ну, быть правильным. То есть задача отрабатывать технику, то, что нам необходимо, да, в армурдесинге, там выносливость, все. А попытаться <coughs> выйти. Right, right, right. He came to compete. He didn't come to train. That's a good way to put it. Looks like he came as a competition. Right, right. Instead of coming to a practice as training, save the competition for the competition. And the training, that's when you're trying to improve. Right. And right, he didn't gain anything from it because you don't gain something from that. In training, you're really gaining when you're getting in those close matches or positions where you have to work on minor adjustments and you're pushing through and you're working on certain angles that you have to, uh, you want to bring up, for example, your weak points or just positions where you have to go 80 to 90%, um, but you're not, you're not losing form and you're not using bad technique. So you're always keeping good technique, but you're pushing the boundaries as far as the intensity of how hard you're going. То есть, как будто он на соревнования приехал. Это второстепенно, он от этого, по сути, ничего не выиграл. Он приехал не на тренировку, а на соревнования. Когда я говорю, переведи, дальше продолжу. Главное, многие приходят даже Exactly an absolute gem here if you read the caption here. Everyone has their strong points and me too, I'm the same way. Like for example, how I said I'm trying to train my right top roll because my hook is my strong point on the right. So once you work those weak points over time, you're, you're gonna become even more well-rounded and not just relying on one technique because if you go to practice every week and just use your one technique and try and win, then you're not gonna be able to explore other options that you could potentially strengthen over time with smart training. When you hear своя сильная сторона, <coughs> и они пытаются на тренировке выиграть. Я всегда заставляю... Yep, if you feel you're stronger, then start going through weak positions. If you feel like you're dominant in this position, start to give up your wrist and work on different positions. Absolute gem as far as long-term strength in the sport. Totally agree. Бороться, тренировать слабые стороны. Если ты чувствуешь, что соперника легко выиграл своей сильной стороной, все. Переходи на слабые места свои и тренируй. Опять же, стартовые движения, да, то есть это уже конкретно предсоревновательный тренировочный процесс. И ну, особенно его не надо там пытаться отрабатывать со спарринг-партнерами. Это делается там, там двумя руками, со жгутами, чтобы не травмировать соперника, своего оппонента. И я считаю... Все-таки тренировочный процесс должен более такой быть вязкий, вязкий, красивый, техничный, вот в плане 
ну, правильно. It's an interesting way of describing it right there. Obviously, there's a language barrier, so the direct translation is maybe not for sure here, but he thinks the training process should be beautiful, uh, viscous, and technical. Правильного процесса. So, I definitely agree in a solid message for the young arm wrestlers out there. Yeah. Потому yeah. что приезжая на тренировку, как Exactly. You don't gain shit from training as if it's a competition. Work on your weak points. На соревнования он не получает ни хрена. Самое правильное, это, конечно, если ты хочешь прям проверить себя, попытаться оказаться в первых рядах в тренировочном процессе. Да, вот те парни, которые первый, второй, третий был, вот они как раз попали вот на, восстан ну, на восстановленного меня. И они могут что-то там уже анализировать. Те, которые потом, ребята, должны понимать, то, что уже все, ребята подзабились все, все, вставай, отрабатывай. Yep, no need to win fast if you know you're already winning, work on your weak points. And I think that basically summarizes it right there. Some absolutely great information there from Dennis. And for beginners, this is information that I would highly recommend you take, take to heart because for me, it took me probably a year, year and a half of being that person who's a beginner in the sport and having some muscle and thinking I should just try and win everything in practice and using having more of an ego in practice. But uh, in the long term, the past year, I've literally leveled up so much in the past year just from smarter training approach. I guarantee this is the one of the main things that's helped me level up is a smarter training approach and working on my weak points. So I hope you can take something from away from this. If you're an arm wrestler, leave a comment what your thoughts on that little training incident are and training philosophy in general because I'm always happy to discuss it or make a video on it. But that's gonna be it for this video. I got the Devin shirt right here, but I'll catch you guys later.